Hello everyone, this is Madhvi Mehta from Kotak Securities Commodity Research Team and I welcome you all to another session of Commodity Catch-Up where we'll discuss major market developments as well as price outlook for major non-agriculture commodities. Well, how far can the Fed go to control inflation? That has been the major question lingering over financial markets which has kept most asset classes volatile. As we move closer to the next Fed meeting, risk appetite waned and the US dollar strengthened and this put pressure on commodities. Gold was the most affected as price slipped below the key 1700 level and tested the lowest level since April 2020. Silver, however, managed to end higher for the week. Industrial metals ended largely lower except nickel on weaker risk sentiment and concerns about China. Crude oil ended a volatile week low as demand concerns outweighed supply risks. The US dollar index slipped to two week low but recovered to end higher, marking its fourth weekly rise in five weeks. The US currency benefited from safe haven buying and Fed's tightening outlook. The Fed's next meeting is due on September 2021 and the central bank is largely expected to raise interest rate by 0.75%. Ahead of the meeting, market players looked at US economic data to determine if the central bank could make a bolder move and also tried to assess future stance. US inflation data showed that price pressure is easing but at a slower pace making a case for the Fed to continue with aggressive hikes. U.S. consumer prices rose at the fastest pace in 40 years in the month of June, but has slowed down in last two months. Producer prices have also eased, while inflation expectations have also subsided. U.S. economic data has been mixed. However, strength in the labor market supported market view that the economy can weather higher interest rates. U.S. weekly jobless claims fell to the lowest level since May. While the US dollar benefited from expectation of Fed continuing with aggressive moves, upside was challenged by monetary tightening stance of other central banks and concerns that the central bank may intervene to support their currencies. Bank of Japan has repeatedly expressed willingness to act to support the Japanese yen, which has slipped to 1998 low against the US dollar. The Chinese yuan breached the 7 uh, level against the US dollar for the first time since July 2020 which may also result in additional measures to support the currency. Other major currencies are also under pressure. British pound slipped to the lowest level since 1985 against the US dollar, while Euro is hovering near 2002 lows. Risk sentiment wavered also as market players assessed health of Chinese economy. China's economic data was mixed as industrial production and retail sales data was better than expectation. However, fall in home prices for the 12th consecutive month highlighted the stress in the property market. Virus concerns eased as China's Chengdu city eased virus-related restrictions. However, uncertainty persists due to strict adherence to zero COVID policy. Adding to demand concerns for commodities, IMF and World Bank warned about slower economic growth in coming months. Central banks will continue to dominate in the coming week. The Fed is largely expected to raise interest rate by 0.75% and this has been factored in. With some improvement in inflation situation, there is little reason for the Fed to act aggressively. So, possi possibility of a surprise move is low. We may see more reaction to Fed's future stance. The US dollar and bond yields have already risen and ris riskier assets have already fallen in anticipation of an aggressive move by the Fed. So, if there is no negative surprise, there is possibility of some reversal. Along with the Fed, Bank of Japan and Bank of England are also due to hold their monetary policy decisions. Bank of Japan is expected to maintain support for a commodity policy. However, it may express concern about inflation and weakness in the Japanese yen. Bank of England is expected to continue with 0.5% high and may not consider a bigger move as inflation has slipped back below the 10% level. The extreme positioning of pound and yen against the US dollar could also make them vulnerable for some correction. Apart from central bank decisions, market players may also look at manufacturing and services PMI data from major economies as well as virus situation in China and Europe's energy crisis. Let us now discuss individual commodities. Commerce gold slipped below 1700 level and tested the lowest level since April as the US dollar and bond yields edged up amid positioning ahead of Fed decision. ETF outflows also showed weaker in investor interest while easing commodity prices eased inflation concerns. Gold has already corrected in anticipation of a major move by the Fed. So if there is no surprise move by the central bank, the metal could see some recovery. Hence, we suggest waiting for corrective rebound to create fresh short positions. 
Silver managed to end higher last week as sell-off in gold and weakness in industrial metals was countered by investor buying as is evident from ETF inflows. The spot gold uh, silver ratio correction also benefited silver prices. Silver is showing some strength as ETF investors are re-entering. However, with challenges for gold and industrial metals, the general bias is still on the downside. Moving to industrial metals, base metals except nickel traded lower last week as US inflation data cemented market expectation of an aggressive move by the Fed. Tighter monetary policy is likely to weigh on growth hurt, hurting demand for the metals. The downside was however limited by some upbeat economic data from China which indicated a recovery in the month of August. Copper ended lower but cash to 3 month spread widened to 10 month high amid tightening stocks at LME warehouses. Aluminium also gained some support from supply concerns in China's Yunnan province which countered record high Chinese output. Going ahead, industrial metals are likely to trade with a negative bias as risk appetite may remain low ahead of Fed decision and manufacturing data from major economies. Aluminium and zinc may gain some support from Europe's energy crisis as European metal industry is not satisfied with the measures taken to control energy prices. Lastly, let's discuss energy complex. Crude oil noted mixed trade but ended lower as support from supply risk relating to Russia and Iran and possible refill of US strategic reserves was countered by sharp rise in US crude oil stocks, increasing concerns about global economy, China struggle with virus spread and IEA's downbeat, growth, uh, downbeat demand outlook for the fourth, fourth quarter. Firmness in the US dollar also weighed on crude oil prices. Crude may remain volatile as both supply risk and demand concerns may, re- may not be resolved soon. However, given the growth worries and shaky risk sentiment, uh, sell-on rise is recommended. Natural gas noted sharp volatility but ended lower, marking its third weekly decline. Natural gas slipped as a deal between uh, railway companies and labor union averted a possible rail strike. Correction in European gas prices and bigger than expected rise in US gas stocks also weighed on prices. Natural gas sell-off has dented market sentiment but we expect to see some buying interest at lower levels amid robust cooling demand in US and supply risk relating to Russia. Well, that's it from my end. I wish you all a very happy trading week. Thank you.